All right, eighth graders, as we move on to unit eight, we're starting to get into information that we did at the very end of seventh grade. Um, so some of this stuff might be new, some of it might be uh, stuff that was difficult for you because you just barely went over it last year. Some of it might be completely reviewed. Um, so each part of unit eight is really long. Uh, so I'm going to kind of fly through them. If you have extra questions, just feel free to ask whenever you need to. So unit eight part one is all about percents, fractions, proportions, and decimals. So writing them in all the different forms, going in between the different forms. So the first section is writing percents as fractions and fractions as percents. So you, a definition I have down for you is for percent. A percent is a ratio whose denominator is 100. When we say ratio, remember we are going to write that as a fraction. So a fraction whose denominator is 100. And then I put in quotes here. When we say percent, we're, we can say per 100. So it says to write the percent as a fraction. As we just said, a percent is a ratio with the denominator of 100. So if I have 16 percent, I just need to write that as 16 over 100. But any time I write a fraction, I'm going to try to put it in simplest form. So this would be 4 over 25. 16 divided by 4 is 4. 100 divided by 4 is 25. So go ahead and do the same thing for 2 and 3. Just put them over 100 and then reduce them as far as you can. And that's writing a percent as a fraction. The next part is writing a fraction as a percent. So like we just said, a fraction is a ratio with 100 as denominator. So if I have 31 over 50, I want to turn this into something over 100. And we kind of did this in unit 7 a little bit with proportions. To get from 50 to 100, I'm going to multiply by 2. So I'll also do 31 times 2, and that'll give me 62. So 62 over 100 is the same thing as 62%. All right, I'll let you guys do the same thing with 2 and 3. And you can turn them into fractions that are over 100, and then that'll be your fraction. The next section says writing a probability as a percent. This might be a little bit harder. I don't know how much you did with probabilities last year. It says the, the letters A through Z are written on note cards and placed in a bag. You pull one note card from the bag, find the probability of the given event, write your answer as a percent. So, um, first thing we need to figure out is that if we have letters A through Z, that means we're talking about 26 letters in the alphabet. Okay, so for number one, it says the probability that you're going to pull out a B. So letters A through Z, there's only going to be one B out of 26 total letters. So my probability is 1 out of 26. But it says to write your answer as a percent. The method we just used isn't really going to work because 26 isn't going to turn into 100. So what you can do is, and you can do this on your calculator, we're just going to divide 1 divided by 26. And when I do that, I get 0 0.03846. And then, as you may remember, to turn a decimal into a percent, I'm going to move it two places to the right. So I'll wind up with 3.8%. So that'll be my probability. For number two, it says the probability of pulling a vowel. So my vowels are A, E, I, O, and U. So I have five vowels out of 26 total letters. Again, the method of turning it into something over 100 is going to work. So I'll just divide it in my calculator. 5 divided by 26 gives me 0 0.1923. Then I can turn that decimal into a percent by moving 2 to the right. So I'll line up with 19.2%, approximately 19.2%. All right, I'll let you guys see number 3, the probability of pulling a constant. Next section down, and again, like I said, there's just a bunch of little parts we're going to kind of fly through. It says finding a percent of a number. Um, so there's a couple ways you can do this. The first way I'm going to show you right here is by taking your percent and putting it as a ratio. So meaning 40% becomes 40 over 100. Just remember, a percent is a ratio with 100 as a number. So I'll put that as 40 over 100. Of means multiplication, so I'm going to multiply it by 30. Now, before I actually multiply, I can simplify this down. So I can knock off a 0, and that becomes 4 over 10 times 30. That I can reduce even further to 2 over 5 times 30. So now I can actually multiply. So I'm doing 2 over 5 times 30 over 1. 
So that's going to give me 60 over 5, which is just 12. So 40% of 30 is 12. So I'll let you guys try that with number 2. Just ask if you have any questions. At the bottom of this page, we have a work comp that says a basketball player makes 21 of her 25 free throw attempts during practice. What percent of her free throws did the player make? So the uh, player made 21 out of 25. We're trying to turn this into a percent, which we know is going to be something over 100. 25 times 4 gives me 100. So I do 21 times 4, and that's going to give me 84. A percent, again, something over 100, so that means this is 84%. The basketball player is making 84% of the free throw. On um, the back of that page, there's another word problem at the top. I'm going to let you guys try that one first. Um, that problem goes with the section we just did on finding the percent of the number. So moving on to solving percent problems right here. Um, I just showed you how to find the percent of a number using a fraction. Now we're going to use proportion. Okay, and this is the part that is straight out of your book. So we can set up the percent proportion uh, A over B equals P over 100. So that's the part over the whole. So A over B is equal to the percent over 100. Because remember, a percent is always a ratio with 100 times the difference. So, we're going to chop this up into a couple different parts. I'll do one example, you do the other. So the first one says uh, finding a percent. So it says use a proportion to answer the question. It says what percent of 45 is 9? Okay, so there's a couple keywords here, of and is. When we draw a proportion, the is number goes on the top, the of number goes on the bottom, and then we have our percent over 100. So we're trying to find the percent here. Our is number is 9. Our of number is 45, part over whole. We're looking for the percent, so put an x there, and then this is always going to be 100, or we're doing percent plus. <coughs> now I can just um, cross, multiply, and divide, like we have before. So 45 times x is 45x. 9 times 100 is 900. And then I can divide by 45, and I'll get x equals 20. So it's 20%. I'll let you guys go ahead and try number 2. It's just like number 1 there. The next section, we're still using the percent proportion, but now we want to find a part. So again, the direction are use the proportion to answer the question. It says, what number is, so there's our first keyword, 20% of 15. So remember, we're going to do is over of percent over 100. So we know this is always going to be 100 on the bottom, right? They give us the percent, which is 20. And then it says of 15. Of is on the bottom, so 15 is on the bottom. We're looking for the top. So when we uh, cross multiply, we get 100x equals Three hundred, and then I can divide both sides by one hundred, and I know x equals three. So three is twenty percent of fifteen. All right, number two, I'll leave for you guys. And then coming down to the last section on the page, now we're finding the base. So we found the percent, we found the part. Now we're finding the base. So our first one is fourteen is. So there's our first keyword, twenty percent. Of what number? Again, is over of equals percent over 100. So 14 is, so 14 goes here. 20%, so 20 goes on the top right. 100 is always on the bottom right. It says of what number? So we're looking for that number. Again, I can cross multiply and divide, so that's 20x equals 1400. I divide both sides by 20. So x will equal. Seven. So 14 is 20% of 7. Alright, I'll leave number 2 for you guys again to try. On um, the next page, there's a uh, couple word problems. I'll do one, I'll each try the other one. It says there are 285 people who attend a fitness center. A yoga class contains 60% of the people who attend a fitness center. 
how many people are in the yoga class. So again, we're going to do our same proportion, is over of, equals percent over 100. So let's fill in what we have. We know this is going to be 100. They tell us that the yoga class has 60% of the people, so 60 is going to go there. And then it says there's 285 people at the fitness center. So we know that 60% of those people attend, so 285 is the total, or the whole. And then we're looking for the part. We're looking for what that 60% is. So now I can cross multiply. Um, I'm actually going to reduce 60 over 100 down to 3 over 5. So that 6 over 10 reduces 3 over 5, just to make it a little bit easier for me. So now when I cross multiply, I'll get 5x equals 855. I can divide both sides by 5 now. And I'll get x equals 171. Now, just looking at this real quick, common sense tells me that if I want 60% of 285, it's got to be a number less than 285. I don't have the whole amount. I just have 60%. So I know that looks right. Number two is another word problem. I'll leave that for you. In the next section, we're looking at working between percents and decimals, which I did talk to you a little bit already. But there's a couple of rules in here which you've probably learned for the past couple of years. So it says to write a decimal as a percent, move the decimal point two places to the right. So that's decimals percent to go to the right. To write a percent as a decimal, two places to the left. So if you look at our first example, it says write the decimal as a percent. Here's my decimal. My rule to go decimals percent is to move two places to the right. So when I do that, I get 17. And I just have to put a percent sign on there. 2 and 3, I'll leave for you to do. Then at the bottom of this page, we're going the other way. So I'm going to pick uh, this middle one because it's a little bit harder. So I have 0.68%. My rule to go from a percent to a decimal is to move two places to the left. So I need to fill in with a zero there. So I have 0 0.0068, and the percent sign drops off. So, decimal to percent, go to the right, percent to decimal, go to the left. On the last page, we're looking at writing fractions as percent. Um, if you remember at the beginning of the section, I showed you uh, a really easy way, and that was when you had easy numbers to work with, like multiples or numbers that multiply up to 100, so like 20, 50, 25. But you're not always going to have easy numbers like that. So when you don't have easy numbers, we're just going to use our calculator. So we want to write 5 eighths as a percent. So we're going to have to go fraction, turn it into a decimal, and then turn that decimal into a percent. So the first thing I'm going to do to turn this fraction into a decimal is I'm just going to do 5 divided by 8. The numerator divided by the denominator. When I do 5 divided by 8, I get 0 0.625. Now I need to turn that decimal into a percent, which we just went over. If I'm going to go decimal to percent, I'm going to go two places to the right. So I'll get 62.5, and then I just throw a percent sign on there, and I'm good to go. All right, two and three I'll leave for you. The last part is finding a percent of a number, which we've done a couple ways. We've done it with a fraction at the beginning of this part, of part one. Then we did it as a proportion in the middle of part one. Now we're going to use a decimal to solve it. So we have 14% of 70. So I'm going to turn 14% into a decimal first. So I got to go 2 to the left. So when I rewrite that, it will become 0.14 and percent sign drops. Then of means multiplication. So of is multiplication. So we're going to do 0.14 times 70. Put that in your calculator and you'll get. 9.8. All right, two and three I'll leave for you. Uh, there's a lot of problems that I left blank. Make sure you get all of those done and check them before you move on.